From February 25, 1983 to June 2, 1985, a depraved killer took the lives of three people in the suburbs of Chicago. The youngest to die at the hands of this creature was only seven years old. He also assaulted multiple women and girls in addition to the murders. In his childhood, he exhibited all three of the early indicators of a psychopath who could grow up to kill. Brian Dugan, the Illinois Creeper. Brian Dugan was born on September 23, 1956, in Nashua, New Hampshire. There were complications during his birth which family suspected led to brain damage and the problems that plagued his childhood. His alcoholic parents had five kids, four sons and one daughter. From an early age, Brian suffered from extreme headaches. They were accompanied by vomiting and he was prescribed medication for it until he was a teenager. In addition to these headaches, he demonstrated signs of psychopathy and the warning signs of a future killer. The three warning signs, known as McDonald's Triad, are bedwetting, cruelty to animals, and fire setting. All three were present throughout Dugan's childhood. At age eight, he burned down the family's garage, and at 13, he used gasoline to burn a cat. In 1967, the Dugan family moved to Lyle, Illinois. In 1972, at age 16, Brian's legal troubles began. He dropped out of school and ran away from home and was soon arrested for burglary and spent some time in a group home. When he returned to his parents' house, his brother reported that he attempted to touch him inappropriately, indicating possible abuse at the group home. Dugan would later claim that in 1972, he met a man in a grocery store who offered him a job. The 16-year-old went with the man, who instead abused him, then dropped him off after giving him some money. In 1978, Dugan saw the man on television being arrested and learned that his name was John Wayne Gacy. In 1974, Brian attempted to kidnap a young girl from a train station in Lyle. He was arrested, but the charges were eventually dropped. He became even more violent and threatened to kill his sister and her child in 1975. This was the same year that his father died of cirrhosis of the liver. Dugan's relatively minor crimes continued until a three-year incarceration from 1979 to 1982 in the Menard Correctional Facility. He would later tell one of his brothers how he had been assaulted there and how a person had to submit or die when imprisoned to the demands of the other inmates. This victimization spurred the violence in Dugan that would lead to him committing heinous acts against defenseless victims soon after his release. The first murder occurred on February 25, 1983. 10-year-old Janine Nicarico was kidnapped from her home in Naperville, Illinois. She had stayed home sick from school and was alone while her parents were at work and her sister was at school. Dugan took her and abused her before beating her to death. Her body was found on February 27, several miles from her home. This case received a lot of publicity and a reward was offered for the arrest of her kidnapper. A 20-year-old named Rolando Cruz tried to claim the reward by implicating two others in the murder. Instead, police arrested all three and they were put on trial for the killing. Two of the three would end up convicted and sent to prison where they would remain until authorities were forced to release them due to evidence pointing to their innocence. On July 15, 1984, the monster struck again. 27-year-old Donna Schnorr was driving when Dugan nosed her. He followed her for a while, then ran her off the road. The creature dragged her from her car, assaulted and beat her. Dugan then dragged her to a quarry where he drowned her. There was not another killing until January 2, 1985. Throughout May, he had abducted and assaulted at least two women and tried to kidnap a third but was unable to get her into his vehicle. The series of attacks culminated with the murder of seven-year-old Melissa Ackerman. The young girl was riding her bike in Somanock, Illinois with her friend, eight-year-old Opal Horton. A man driving a blue gremlin stopped and got out and approached the girls. He acted like he was looking for directions until they were within reach. Dugan threw Opal into the car, then grabbed Melissa to do the same. 
While he wrestled her into the car, Opal got out and ran for her life. With Ackerman in his car, the monster sped off. He assaulted the young girl, then drowned her in a creek 15 miles from where he had taken her. Two weeks later, her body was found only days after what would have been her eighth birthday. The day after the last murder, police arrested Dugan at his job. They were following up on an unrelated assault against a woman. Soon they got a description of the killer and his car from Opal Horton and charged Brian Dugan with the murder of Melissa Ackerman. He confessed to all three murders, but later would only plead guilty to the killing of Ackerman and Schnorr after police found evidence in his car connecting him to these last two murders. He was trying his best to avoid the death penalty for the vicious killings and succeeded, receiving only two life sentences. But he slipped through the cracks with regard to the Janine Nicarico murder, at least for a while. In 1995, the two men who had been convicted for Nicarico's murder were released from prison. An investigation led to the indictment of seven police officers, three prosecutors, and four sheriff's deputies on charges for conspiring to convict the two men, despite evidence pointing to their innocence. They were given a $3.5 million settlement for the time they had spent behind bars. The state then took its time putting together a case against Dugan for the Nicarico murder. He was indicted in 2005 for the crime after advances in DNA testing allowed investigators to match Dugan's to the DNA found on the young girl. In 2009, he pled guilty but was thankfully still sentenced to death. However, in 2011, Illinois abolished capital punishment and Brian Dugan is currently housed at the Pontiac Correctional Facility.